Welcome everyone. This is Maria Sample. I am the Prospect Finder LLC. I'm based in Bridgewater, New Jersey. Welcome to today's webinar. I am one of Constant Contact's authorized local experts. I do a lot of local seminars. Today I thought I would do a webinar. Since the weather in the Northeast can be tricky in February, I thought I'd put a few webinars on the calendar this month. Um, so welcome. Welcome to those of you who have perhaps been in some of my um, live seminars. Um, I'm also co one of Constant Contact's uh, local um, authorized local experts and uh, master certified solution providers. And I recently published a book, for, so for those of you who might want to check that out, you can find it on Amazon and so forth. And I wanted to be able to take all the information I have gleaned over my years in business, for my own business, and working with my clients. And I published a book called Magnify Your Business, and it's filled with lots of tips, tools, and strategies for you. Um, I wrote the book so that it could be consumed by a nonprofit as well as a for-profit. So don't let that title um, dissuade you at all and uh, check it out and also look to connect with me through my social media sites as well. So today's agenda, I'm going to be taking you through a live guided demonstration. I'm going to log into Constant Contact into a demo account. I'll show you how to create an, an HTML email. We'll do things like editing the colors, the pictures. Uh, creating some links, hyperlinks, as well as inserting your social media sites. And then we'll also talk about, of course, how to upload your contacts and um, look at some of the back-end reports. Um, at the end, I'll take a look at some of the questions that will come in, so feel free to type questions into the box. And I will look to answer those questions as best I can during our time together. And if not, I'll be able to answer them hopefully through an email directly back to you. So feel free to use that chat box and typing it in. For just a couple of things that I wanted to talk about housekeeping wise. For those of you who've had constant contact accounts for a long time, you know that when you log in your account screen looks a little bit like this. But for those of you who are newer to constant contact, your login looks a lot more like this. So don't let that dissuade you. No matter what you're seeing when you first log into your Constant Contact account, once you're in that front door, you're all using that same editing tool to create your email campaigns. So I did want to say that because the um, demo account that I'm using is their newer account and uh, their newer platform. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that once you're in the product, um, you're, you all have that same capability. Very often people ask me, well, Maria, what exactly do you do? What exactly does Constant Contact do? Certainly they are the toll-free support. Those of you who have been customers know their terrific customer support team through the 800 number, through the chat box, as well as email support. Um, I do the local seminars and webinars, and I also actually do the work for people who just simply feel like they don't have enough time to do it, and they say, Maria, will you just do it for me? And I do, of course, do that. So if that is of interest to you, just email me, and we'll talk about the right solution for your company. So let me get into the Constant Contact account. So I've already logged in, just to save some time. As I said, I'm under the newer platform. So this is what it looks like. now. When you want to create an email, and I've got one here that I'm actually going to be editing, I selected a template. But just to show you, when you hit that um, Create button, you have an opportunity to do a number of things once you're here. But today, we're going to actually be creating an email. And those of you who've been customers for a long time, you know that the templates are it seems endless, really, the, the number of templates that you can select from in the email marketing tool. Um, the templates that are being proposed now in Constant Contact are all mobile-friendly, mobile-responsive. So that is really key. 
um, when I start working for a client who's had an email template in place for a long time, generally the first thing that I do is take a look and see how mobile responsive that template is. And this may be time for you to refresh and choose a brand new template. Well over 50% of emails are now opened on mobile devices only. So please keep that in mind in terms of the type of template you choose as well as the size font that you're using. Really super important going forward with your email marketing. Okay, um, It's important to focus on the layout of the template, so don't get bogged down by um, the type of template. So for example, this is education news. Um, if you are not an educational institution but you like the simplicity of this particular template, go ahead and select it and you can customize all the colors, um, all the graphics and all of that that you see. So um, it's really more important to focus on the type of email and the layout and that really resonates for your brand um, as opposed to what you're seeing in terms of colors and logos and so forth because it can all be customized. Okay, But for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my home page and since I selected a template that I thought would work well for us to be able to, uh, to work through, I'm going to go in and you can see it's in draft mode. So anytime you see a template you like, you can always keep it there in draft mode and then come back and do an edit to this template. Now, if this is a template that you like and you once you customize it, you may want to rename this to master template and always keep that template as your master that you would come back and then hit this copy button going forward from month to month or week to week, however often you get your email campaigns out. But for now, I'm going to actually go ahead and edit this email. Now, I went in and named this earlier to Constant Contact Demo. Uh, this is only something that's going to be seen internally by you. So it should be, again, if it's going to be your master template, once you customize it as your master, you may want to name it that. Um, going forward, however, you know you want to name it your February campaign, March campaign, etc. You'll notice here you've got um, a couple of navigation bars. You can change all these colors and fonts from this toolbar here. You can actually look at the various types of blocks that you can add to this particular email campaign. And you've got your spam check and various design tools here and your preview button. So let's go into the header options. And you'll notice as I hover my cursor over the various blocks, things can be edited copied, they can be moved around, and you can also delete blocks altogether. And that would, that's what part of what makes this so simple to use because you can move things around very easily. So let's get into the header options because there's some really important things that you have to focus on in the header options. First and foremost is the subject line. Other than the from line of your email, your subject line is going to be the second most important thing people are going to focus on. Okay, So the subject line should be short, it should be catchy, um, it, should, it should not read February newsletter or news from our company in February. Um, that's basically the kiss of death. And so for those of you doing that, please figure out a different way to make that subject line a little bit more catchy. Take something in that content and bring it into the subject line. It really is important to change it up. Something rather new is known as pre-header text. And this comes into play mostly on mobile devices. Think of this as extra real estate in your subject line. So if all of you were to be looking at your mobile device right now, you'll notice that the first line, when you're looking at your email inbox, 
okay, before you even click through to an email and you're looking at all those emails sitting in your inbox, the first line is going to be the from line, the sub subject line is the second line, and then the third line is actually pre-header text. So this is an opportunity for you to um, really kind of capture somebody's attention with some extra real estate. So let's say this subject line is going to be um, um, three seats left for tomorrow night. The preheader text, you might put something like register today. Okay? So that if they don't even open the email, they will know who it's from, and of course you want to customize this as well, but they will know that there are three seats left for tomorrow night and they should register today. Okay? So make it compelling, make, create some urgency if there is indeed urgency to be created in this particular communication. So the from line, this is important. I never know how exactly people are going to remember me, so I will typically use both my name and my company name in the subject line. If you can do that, if you are your brand, as is the case for me, I like to put both in that from line so that I will be recognized when I get it, I land in somebody's inbox. The permission reminder. For those of you new to email marketing or, or will be starting a new account, I want to make sure that you understand that the permission reminder is something that you may want to consider turning on. And this is a way to dissuade folks from hitting the spam button as opposed to just simply hitting the opt-out button. Um, so those of you new to email marketing, you may want to consider keeping that permission reminder on. I typically do not do this because people's mobile devices will usually render my emails looking great because I'm using that mobile responsive template. Um, but this, would, this was something that was important to do but I don't do it anymore because now the, the templates are so mobile um, responsive. And certainly you'll want to provide the social share links. And so let me just show you what this looks like and why you want to have the importance of that social share link. This social share bar has to do with the recipient being able to share your emails on their social media channels. So let's talk about that for a quick second. Imagine I send out an email communication and let's just say for purposes of this discussion maybe my list has a thousand people on it. But all of you receiving the email have social media channels. You can easily forward the email of course to any anybody you think would resonate with the message in my email. But you can also share my email with your friends on Facebook. You can share my email with a tweet. You can share my email in your LinkedIn or your Google Plus account. So now, people who are beyond my list, people who are part of your world and your community can now see my email communication. Okay, so it would be the email just as we're going to be customizing it right now. So that's pretty powerful and that's social proof um, and that is leveraging your email into, um, into social media. Of course, you'll want to make sure that your own emails are leveraged into your own social accounts, but by providing the social share bar here, you're letting your recipients share it as well. Here's some top content. Had you not filled out that pre-header text, that register today line that we filled out, this top content would be what is going to show up first. Okay, so it would be the first words of the email. Let's go into starting to edit this and customizing it a little bit more. You'll want to make sure that your logo is placed either to the left or the center. That's typically the best place to place that logo. And if you already have it uploaded into your image library, you can actually pull it from there.
And two things you want to do with all your logos. You want to make them clickable to a website or a specific landing page of your website. And you want to give it an image description. And I generally recommend that this image description not just be PF logo or whatever, but rather you can make this an action statement. So that if they don't have images enabled on their whatever website they are um, actually um, using for their for the emails, you will actually they'll they'll instead of seeing that that box with the red X in it, they'll actually be able to see this action statement. So that's just a little tip that you may want to consider uh, for your email marketing. Put um, put an action statement as the image description. Okay. Now, let's say you want to highlight a specific new product. Okay. Let's say we want to do that and let's say we're going to center this text. You may want to put a picture of that new product or service. And if you want to go to the stock image gallery and select a specific photo, you can do that from here. Um, let's say it's a food product that you're highlighting. Maybe you're a food business. You have pro images, which will typically cost $8, or you have tons of free images to choose from. Uh, let's, say it is, uh, let's say it is a new cookie of some sort that you've, you've come up with. Okay, let's see here. Say we want to use this image here. and hit done. Specific page of your website if you want. And again, learn about our new cookie. So you're going to provide a brief description about that cookie. And then people can click a link and learn more. So let's talk about this hyperlink. A couple of places this can be linked to. It can certainly be linked out to your website, a specific landing page. Um, maybe you've written a, a blog article, so you'll provide the first couple of sentences for that blog article. And then when they click the Learn More, they'll land on the website. Or this could actually lead to a PDF document that actually has more information on it. Okay, So let's go with the scenario of a PDF document that might have more information about this particular product that you're highlighting. You highlight the text that you want to have link to the document. And then click here where it says Document Link. You'll upload a document from your computer, your PDF document. But since I've got some already uploaded in here, let's say I select, I want it to click through to this, and hit Insert and Save. Now I can test whether or not this link is working. Let me save my work and preview this email. When I click Learn More, it should lead me to the document that I've uploaded. So this is a question I get asked all the time. Maria, how can I attach a document to an email? And this is the way you would have attachments to your email. Okay? So convert them first to a PDF, 
and then they will be something that you can attach to your emails. One thing that I want to uh, talk about with regard to when you see these three triple images in a row like this. On a mobile responsive template, as this one is, when this email is going to be viewed on a mobile device, what will happen is this first image and, and description are going to be stacked over top of the second one, which will be stacked over top of the third one. So part of it being responsive is the fact that it's going to take these three images and stack them on top of each other. So that is an important point for you to, to know about. So if you are on this call today and you have various products that you want to be able to highlight, know that you can do it with this particular template and that it will render very nicely on a mobile device. Okay? So Again, let's just pretend here we have additional products we want to highlight. We're going to change this. Go to your library, pick the new product that you want to highlight. Make sure you click, fill it out as a clickable link and a new image description. You can resize that image within that block if you want and then hit insert. And here, if they want to learn more about this particular product, you can link it to a particular page of your website. And save. OK? So let's talk about the colors that you're seeing here. This blue may have perhaps nothing to do with the color of your website. So you would want to make sure that you customize it. Um, there is a, there are lots of tools online that allow you to actually um, customize the colors. One that I use is called Colorzilla, and I don't know if you can see this, but up here on my computer, I actually have the um, eyedropper. Um, so basically, um, let's just say, I'm, let's go to my website for a moment, and I wanted to pick up the exact color blue that I've seen on my website. Let's say I want to pick up on this blue and this gray and use these colors. So I'll go to the dropper, so this is a free add-on called Colorzilla. I'll activate it, and I don't know if you can see this, but right up here it's changing colors. See that, see that hex number? This number right here, this pound sign with this code of letters and numbers after it is known as a hex number. So as I move my cursor, you can see that it has changed, and I'm going to click on it. So that color, blue, has been copied to my clipboard. You go back to the emails, and let's see, what is this known as? The title area. So let's change all, the, all this blue here to more colors. We're going to customize that by pasting in the new color blue. So it didn't change all that much, so you might not have seen a big change there. Let's try and change it to this gray. Again, activate the color picker, and let's go with this gray so that it'll be a bigger change for you to see. Notice how that color changed now. So all of these colors can be changed very, very easily. Now, let's say you've decided that you don't have three products, after all, that you want to highlight this month or three services. You can just click this X by cl deleting this block altogether. It will ask you to confirm, and that's all you need to do. 
Now, let's say you want to make sure that you've got your social media highlighted in this email. And perhaps you even want to offer a um, See here, here we go. Social media. There we go. Now, all of these are little JPEGs. Now, you might not have all those social channels, so you want to edit this. Um, let's say my business, for example, does not have a Pinterest account, so I'm going to delete the little Pinterest icon. Um, and you'll want to make sure that each of these links properly to your social accounts. So let's change these and change and you can decide that you want it to say like us on Facebook like me on Facebook or choose one of the icons and let's say we're going to go with this size and customize the landing and hit insert okay so that when people click on that, they're going to land directly on your company's LinkedIn and um, Facebook account. Okay, so you would go ahead and customize for each one of the um, social channels that you have. Now, one of the other really cool things that you can do is insert video. Video happens to be um, a very, very popular uh, way of highlighting your company, of sharing um, even um, product demonstrations or learning tutorials. So I do want to make sure I show you how to insert video. So photos are great, videos are wonderful. People just can't seem to um, resist actually clicking through. So let's say you want to focus on some video and so let me maybe put a button, um, a content block here to add some video in. Uh, maybe we want to divide it, so we'll copy that accent divider and maybe move it up here as well. And let me show you how you'll go ahead and insert some video. Edit this block. Maybe put some text here, get rid of the uh, call to action link. So maybe you'll announce a particular product or service. And then here where it says insert, we're going to say insert a video link. Okay? Click the little plus button. And videos have to be parked somewhere online, right? And they're telling you YouTube, Vimeo, Blip TV, point across video. The two biggies are YouTube and Vimeo. YouTube, actually, if you don't already have a YouTube account um, and you've got some videos online, I highly recommend that you get a YouTube account. It's owned by Google and it's the number two search engine behind Google. So it does help in your search engine rankings if you have a YouTube account and you start populating it with some video. So that being said, I'm going to pop over to my YouTube account for a moment so I can grab a URL for a video. So decide which video you want to highlight. Click on the video. And I'm going to stop the video from playing because what I want to be able to do is show you where to pick up that URL. Do you see this share, share uh, link right here? When you click that, it's going to show you that URL. I'm going to do a control C to copy. Come back into my constant contact. Control V to copy that in and create an image. What has happened now, it creates a thumbnail image that you can edit the size of, just like you edit your other still images. You can title the video. I usually like to let people know it's, you know, three minute video firm overview and hit insert and save. 
Now you see how it created that thumbnail with that arrow in it? These get a lot of click-through engagement. So you'll be able to gauge over time what types of video content is really resonating with your audience. So I really recommend that you do use some video. I'm going to see if anybody has any questions at this point. Can you show how to make sure the social media links work? Yes, absolutely. Let me show you how to do that. Go to preview mode. And you can test that in one of two ways. You can certainly send the email to yourself and up to five people so that you can see how this email looks when it lands in your inbox on both a mobile device and your desktop device. But from this preview mode, you can also simply scroll down and test the link. Now, the only one I actually linked up was Facebook, so let's test this link. And it did work. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question. All right, so let's hit save. Before we continue with showing how to actually set this up to send out, I do want to step back for a moment and talk about the Contacts tab and uploading new contacts. So let's say this particular email is going to go to a new list. Okay? So adding contacts, you can type in certainly one you know, or several contacts at a time. But typically, if you can get your contacts into an Excel spreadsheet, it's going to save you a lot of time. So you can upload from a file. You're going to choose the file that you want to upload from. I happen to have a sample file on my desktop. And then you assign each column. So here it's already picked up on the fact that this is a first name, this is a last name, uh, email address. Let's assign these as probably being work emails, um, and that this is a company name. Okay? But you can see there are so many things we could be assigning here. So if, um, if your business wanted to track people's birthdays or anniversaries, Maybe that would be the, the, the information that was in this particular column. You can import as much information as you want and create custom fields as well. But this is picked up on the fact that this is somebody's um, company name. So we're just going to leave it at company and then we'll hit next. You can assign this to a particular list that already exists. Um, but let's say we want to create this as a new list. So let's say that this is our um, February prospects. Maybe they've attended an event you've had, um, or these are some new folks that you've met through your networking and you've got permission to start emailing them. So we're going to create a new list called February prospect list and create. So you can see it's created the list and automatically checked it for us. We can further tag our prospects. So if you haven't learned about tagging, you may want to go into that. It's a way to refine the list a little bit further. And we're going to click Upload. All right, so now we've got a new list. Let's go back to our campaign. And now we can either go back in and edit it or we can schedule it right from here. We can preview it. Um, just to make it easier though, let's just go back into it, to the edit mode. Now let's assume this email looks exactly as you want it to look. It's got all the right elements. You've tested all the links. You've previewed it. You've sent it to yourself and perhaps a colleague. 
everybody's looked it over, everybody says it looks good, you're ready to hit that continue button and get ready to send this out. You get to decide from here what list gets the email. Okay, So let's say you want to make sure that your new February prospect list gets it. Um, but then maybe you decide that you have one or two other lists that should be getting this as well. Maybe you want to have your Livingston families also receive it. And then you hit the Save button. Segmenting your lists is a really great way of making sure that folks are getting your emails that want to be receiving them. It really reduces the opt-out rates. Now you get to decide when to send it out. Okay, Constant Contact is going to be suggesting a best time. Um, you certainly can decide that you want to send it now or schedule it yourself for a later date and time. So maybe you want to send this email out Friday and you want to send it out at 10 a.m. Okay? can actually schedule it to be sent out Friday at 10 a.m. And they'll actually prompt you at this point. They'll say, nice work, your email's ready to launch. Now promote your message on your social networks using Social Share. Okay? So if you scroll down here, you have the opportunity to take this email that you've now just scheduled and have it automatically post for you on your social networks. You click Schedule Posts. And then you'll connect to particular social accounts. So you'll first have to connect your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Twitter accounts to Constant Contact so that they'll connect. And then you can decide on the message that you want to have precede this particular email. You can decide on which image you want to use. In fact, you can actually select from your library of images. So let's go back to that new cookie that you've come up with. Maybe you want that image to accompany the social media post. You can decide on a particular date and time. So if you want it to go out Friday, um, let's say the email was sent out Friday morning, but maybe you know that your community is going to be checking out their social networks in the evening. You can actually schedule this post to go out at 9 p.m., even though the email itself will be sent out at 10 a.m. And you can schedule additional social posts of this same email. But let's say you don't want that. Maybe you only want it to post once. You can actually remove these other posts so that it's only going to post once on your social networks. This is a huge time-saving tool. I use this myself all the time. Um, when I send out my monthly emails, I have it connected to my th major three social channels. It posts automatically for me at the date and time that I specify that that should be done. So it is a huge time saver. If you're not already using it, I really recommend that you do so. I think you'll really like the ease with which you can actually get these posted on your social sites. Okay, You just customize the wording and it's going to create a URL link that takes you directly to that email. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to hit the Cancel button because I don't have this demo account actually connected to any of my social sites yet. Let's look at some of the back-end stats. I promised to show you a little bit about that. So let me just minimize and look at some sample email marketing results. Once you've sent an email out, and this may be a little bit redundant for those of you who um, have been using Constant Contact for a while, you know that you've got a nice quick report that shows you how many were sent, how many bounced, how many people might have reported it as spam, how many opted out, opens, clicks, and forwards. The 
only data you cannot drill down on is your spam reports. Okay, so for privacy purposes, they don't tell you who reported the email as spam. Okay, but if you are doing this in a permission-based way, and if you're not going out and buying lists and dumping them into Constant Contact, which as you know is illegal to do, it's against the Can Spam Act, then you know that you'll be good to go. Okay, and your spam reports are going to be pretty low. This also shows you the click-through stats, the various click-throughs, whether you're clicking through to PDFs or an outside website. It's going to get you some good stats to know who was interested in what particular topic. Really important. In fact, what you can even do is, like I could take these 17 people and actually put them into a whole new list. What that does for me is if I wanted to communicate with just those 17 people as a separate list and maybe give them some different messaging, I can do that because I, they've clearly shown interest in that particular topic or product or whatever that link is leading you to. Um, for the opens report, okay, so again, drilling down on this particular number, um, you will know who opened the report and what date and time they opened it on. And on the bounce report, it gives you the various categories. So if something is non-existent or undeliverable, um, I really recommend because you can export this report. So if you have other team members or employees with whom you might need to share these lists, um, you know, people's email addresses change all the time. So you may want to, from time to time, come in here and actually delete the ones that are no longer existent email addresses. And they also give you the social share stats. So this is kind of interesting. It kind of gives you an idea on what other social networks your email has actually been shared on. So this is telling me, for example, that this email was shared once on LinkedIn and was not shared on the other social networks. So kind of a cool stat. Um, interesting for you to be able to see where your emails may be gaining traction on other social networks. Might even give you some idea of what social networks you should be getting a little stronger on in terms of your company's presence. So hopefully those social share stats um, are helpful and useful to you. Now for those of you who don't currently have a Constant Contact account, I'm going to be sending a follow-up email to you and um, give you the link URL where you can actually um, learn a little bit more about Constant Contact. I'll offer you a free trial, and that's a 60-day free trial, and I really encourage you to um, go ahead and try it out. Um, you'll have the help area will be available to you. There's that phone number that will be at the top of your screen. You can call them. And um, in fact, once your account is established, you will get a call from a coach at Constant Contact because their customer support is just that great. So now I'm going to check out again and see if you have any additional questions. So there's a question about what size font is best for mobile devices. Okay, let's talk about changing font sizes. Okay. First thing I need to do is I'm going to go back into this email and let me unschedule it so I can go back into the email. And let me go in and edit it. You want to think about for the text should be a minimum of 11 points. So here this happens to be already at 11 point font, but let's say you wanted to make it even bigger, you can bring it to like a 12 point font and hit save. 
Um, maybe you want to take this headline area and make it even bigger. Maybe you want to make it a 20-point font. So you want to think about a minimum of 11-point font for your email marketing for the text of your email marketing. Please tell us again the name of the color add-on feature. Okay, so the one that I'm using, there are a number of different tools, but the one that I use is called, um, hold on. Um, so if you go to, if you Google color picker tools, it's, and it's going to change for different, um, colorzilla, C-O-L-O-R, Z-I-L-L-A. That's the one that I'm using. Um, and it interacts very nicely with my Google Chrome. <laughs> so much great information, a lot to take in. Yes, absolutely. But just know that you've got their customer support team behind you. Okay, will the size font automatically reconfigure for mobile device? Yes, you will have, you know, this, this, and again, that's the importance of previewing your email and testing it. Make sure that you can see it well on your mobile device. Um, and so if you happen to have a mobile device with a larger screen, you might want to test send that email to someone with a smaller screen, perhaps an iPhone, a smaller iPhone, and take a look, can your eyes see it? If not, go ahead and increase the size of that font before that final send. Okay, I'm not seeing any additional questions come in. If I've missed anything, I will review it in the, um, in the comments that I'll get from the webinar provider. And um, I just wish you all the best. Again, I will follow up by email. Those of you not a customer, I'll offer you a free trial and um, give you an idea of where you can get some extra support and I'll give you a, um, um, I'll see if I can get a guide for you to help you get started as well and put that link in the email and wishing you all the best. I hope that um, you have an opportunity to check out my website as well, which is theprospectfinder.com and wishing you all a great day. Bye now.